Lovely. Duchess, Sarah, you are official now because you have a mug. Yeah. Yes. I am very pleased. I, yeah. I, I quite enjoy being a loose woman. <laughs> <laughs> so do we. <laughs> we are loving it so far. You have fitted in incredibly yeah. well. <laughs> yes, you really have. We are very thrilled to have you with us today. And like we say, it's a very, very special show. Um, and today is all about supporting the launch of our brand new breast cancer campaign. Don't skip your screening. Working with NHS England and leading breast cancer charity, Breast Cancer Now, we have discovered that while 80% of women diagnosed with breast cancer are over the age of 50, the age at which screening starts, 40% of women within this age bracket are not going to their mammogram appointments. That means 1.2 million women in England alone are missing out on these crucial and potentially life-saving checks each year. And while we only have up-to-date figures for England, the number nationwide will, of course, be much, much higher. Um, and for all of you today, we know it's, it's something that you have either lived through or indeed, <coughs> Colleen, you know, within your family, you've been living through it. Mm -hmm. um, and Sarah, you were one of these women that nearly didn't go for the screening appointment. It was just one of those things you thought, I'll put it off. Mm. And it was a conversation with your sister that made you go. Well, uh, yes, it was. And it was after bank holiday and it was a Tuesday morning and I thought, no, it's a hot day and nah, no, no, I don't need to go. I'm sure it'll all be fine. I had no symptoms, I was completely fine. And uh, my sister from Australia, she, uh, she tends to be the older sister and fairly bossy. And thank <laughs> God, goodness for her bossiness because she said, no, no, no. No, 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 you've got to go, you've got to go, you've got to go. And I went, and uh, of course, they, of course, it's so early, just in time. Now, I think it's really important that today we are all talking about this, because the real thing is, is that it's that terrible fear. You think, no, 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 uh, it's not going to happen mm. to me, but I'm too frightened to go and I won't go. And that's why I really want to shout about this. Don't skip your, your screening appointment, because I would not be sitting here if I, if I hadn't have gone. Mm. And, No symptoms, you, you didn't think there was anything wrong in any shape or fashion. What did happen then after the screening? What was the next step? Well, I'm very grateful to the Royal Free Hospital and the NHS because they have got this extraordinary dye that they put through your arm and, and it can actually really detect the shadows. And uh, the shadow, it wasn't a lump, I had a, a shadow, it was like a splat. Right. I don't know, did you have a splat? It was... No, mine was a definite P. P, mm. was it? And mine was lots of P's, and it had gone literally like a boop, like someone had gone like that at me. You know, I don't mm. know, it's quite extraordinary. 18 months before, it wasn't there. So it had come on wow. from the last mammogram to this mammogram. That's really interesting. And, and so then, immediately at the Royal Free, the, the drive from the Royal Free Hospital, I'll never forget, mm. because, of course, your mind goes into, oh, my goodness, I've got to have a mastectomy, mm. and you look it up, and it's all so terrifying, and this is what's going to happen, and then I'm not going to see my grandchildren grow up. Mm. That's mm. what goes through your head. Yeah. And so I don't know whether that's the same for you, Brenda, but, or oh, Colleen, mm. it's, it's that feeling of demise. Mm. And it was every bump on the road, and everywhere I went, I went, oh, well, you know... You know, you do, your mind goes, and uh, and anyway, so yes, I had a single mastectomy to the left breast. I had the huge, great, big smiley yep. cesarean, as yeah. I call it. <laughs> it's a very big smiley cesarean. Yeah. It's gone from that to that. Mine's yeah. not smiling. Mine's mine's miserable. miserable. <laughs> 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 and so then they remove all of uh, all of your fat, which yeah. I thought was going to be great. And then they put it. In... <laughs> <laughs> I thought, at last, yes, I got a waistline. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then they, of course, did amazing work. Mm. Nine hours, uh, ten hours later, uh, they had done an incredible, incredible work. The Diet method is available on the NHS, mm. where you can have reconstruction straight away, and they put it through your nipple. How and soon incredible. after? How soon? After you were diagnosed, did all of that happen? Was it almost instant? It was very quick. Mm. I think they were very worried about it, and, and uh, it was very, very quick. But they, uh, the nursing and the, 
and all the, the surgeons and, I mean, they're just incredible. Mm. I mean, they're just incredible. Now, for anybody who is watching who thinks that maybe they think I'm being frivolous, <coughs> I'm not. But the way I get around this is I say, this is Derek mm. and this is Eric. And <laughs> since I've I had think, a... Why male names? No, 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 no. <laughs> just in case okay. anyone out there thinks why male names, yeah. Derricka and Erica, oh. <laughs> right? Or, or they. Yeah. Okay, so we're fine. But the thing is about Derek, he's very perky and fabulous. Is yours mm. fabulous? Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I wasn't expecting you to ask oh, me that. Sorry, sorry, yes. sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and then, and Eric is sort of down. He's not as perky as Derek. Oh, mine are okay. both perky. Oh, oh you have. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm pinky both? and perky. <laughs> <laughs> So, so really exciting is that uh, I actually feel sort of really happy to talk about it because please go get your screening. Mm. Please. Yeah. You say that you get the diagnosis and you go through all of this. It's it's that it, that car journey really resonated with me when you when you spoke there, Sarah. It's just the, the thought of I'm dealing with this now. You're trying to take that on board. How do I tell my family? Yeah. Mm. That that that's the other chapter to this, isn't it? Because you try to go into stealth mode, you have to protect yourself, and then to, it's your family as well that are on this journey with you. Of course, how did you approach that? Uh, I said to my girls, who are incredible, my, I mean, the whole family's incredible, and I said to my girls, well, you know, I think they're, they're a bit worried about something, so we're just going to go for more checks, and then, you know, if oh. we do go and um, have to do anything, they'll just whip it out. So and you then... spoke to them before you had the full diagnosis, because yes. with me, I, I left it until I'd got the diagnosis because I didn't want certain questions that I couldn't answer. So as soon as you'd had your screening... Or they knew before you were having the screening. Yeah, they said, oh, wow. Mum, yeah, and then they said, um, OK, so are you going to tell us it's... Uh, is it cancer? Yeah. And I said, well, I actually don't really know yet, but let's not worry about it till we actually face it. Right. However, <laughs> oh, they're going to whip it out. Yeah. And once whipped out, I mean, I was incredibly lucky. Mm. I mean, you know, the lymph nodes, they did... It yeah. didn't go into the lymph nodes. Right. right. Uh, well, they removed to test. They removed 20... Um, lymph nodes from underneath my arm to mm. test, and thank God they were clear. Right. Um, but it, it, it's obviously still very sore under mm. there. It is, isn't it? Seven years later. And I, I also, the other thing is, I want anyone who, if they are going through this and do have to go and have a mastectomy and everything, lymph drainage. Go mm. straight away to mm. have lymph drainage. Did anyone yeah. tell you that? No. Mm. Honestly, no. I really think strongly about this. I, I go straight into lymph drainage, so it moves the lymph around, uh -huh. so you don't get these lumps and bumps. Okay. And this is why you are being so open, aren't you, about all of this, because you want to save people's lives. It's so important about this screening, you know, that they go. And, yes, it's very scary, but look at you now, you mm. know, sitting here positive, you know, you've come through amazingly, you look amazing. Mm. And if that just saves one person's life, then it's, it's worth every minute. I couldn't have it. I couldn't have it. I couldn't have it. I think it's fascinating, honestly, and thank you for saying mm. that. I think it's fascinating. My father died of prostate cancer, my stepfather died of cancer, everybody died of cancer. And Dad used to go out on the radio back in those days, in early 80s, saying, go and get your checks for prostate cancer. And all his friends used to ring him up and say, Ronald, no one wants to hear from you, shut up. Mm. OK? Mm. So when I was coming on today, mm. I simply don't care if anyone likes it exactly. or not. I want, if there's one person yeah. that is going to have a fabulous life and see their grandchildren because of us speaking mm. about it, mm -hmm. then good for it. Mm. Go for it. Yeah. And just the importance of that mind and body connection as well, Sarah, which I think is really interesting, isn't it? The mind and body sort of coming together at this point because you've got to be emotionally strong and physically strong yeah. to get through the next chapter of your life, really. Yes, and then, of course, you start four in the morning syndrome. Do you get four in, four in the morning syndrome? I'm usually sleeping by four in the morning. Oh, mm, yeah. 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 Well, I yeah. try to be. Well, so do I. <laughs> but then, you know that moment when you suddenly wake up and go, oh, well, I'm sure I've got cancer somewhere else, or yeah. I'm sure oh. that I'm going to... I'm going to go and ring my oh, doctor and start... Yeah. 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 You do become... I'm getting over that now. Yeah. But I've only... It's only been a few months since I've 
this year since I've had the operation. Mm. So I'm just beginning to sit up straight. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, because do you remember yeah. how you... Had, yeah. you, you yeah. doubled mm -hmm. over. Yeah. You just, uh... So it's, I, th I, think, I think also I want people who, have, who are suddenly going to be diagnosed with a mastectomy, I'm here. It's mm. OK. You got this. You yeah. got this. You just... Keep but equally so, you've had those moments. You have, you've had the fear yeah, moments. Um, fear. But it, like you said, you're you're here today, yeah. and you, and you're so happy and lucky. And again, it's all down to the screening and getting in there early. Yeah. Which... And and also reaching out, Christine, to people like all of mm. you and saying, how do you, how do I manage this? Mm. Yeah. Uh, ask for friendship. Ask mm. advice. Ask and, and and the buddy system. I love that. Mm. Yeah. You know, when as soon yeah. as today we talked, I went, oh, so you, we, we're the same to club. That. Yeah. 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 It's that. Huge scar from hip to hip. It was a big comfort. It was a big comfort to, to speak to somebody else that's pretty much been through everything the same same way that I, I had. So yeah. thank mm -hmm. you for no that. No one can go through what you've been through. <laughs> well, like you said, um, it's so, so important that we talk about all of these different issues. And for more information on our new campaign and everything that we've been discussing so far, go to itv.com forward slash loose women.